hey everybody, my name is Matt. I am the co-founder and CTO of Pinata. Um, and we like to say that we are the easiest way to use IPFS. Um, came out of the blockchain space, we've been around since uh, 2018 or so. So I'm also approaching two years of <laughs> doing what we do. So what is uh, a pinning service? Uh, Pinata is a pinning service for the IPFS network, which means that we will pin your content on our IPFS nodes as a service. So why would you use Pinata in addition to, or in place of running your own IPFS nodes? We've done a lot of work to make sure that it's as easy as possible to pin content on IPFS uh, using our service with an easy API and a simple UI to upload and manage your pins. We're also focusing on making sure that Pinata is fast. So we prioritize any updates at, for our network that impact speed and make sure that speed is a very important factor in deciding kind of how we evolve as a service. Um, we don't wanna do everything. We wanna do the things that we do uh, very well. And then lastly, we're always online. So we offer a reliable way to make sure that your content is always available through our network of IPFS nodes all around the world. We have nodes in Europe, uh, the United States, and we're always expanding more. So hit us up if you have locations that you'd like to see. And what this means is that teams can save money by relying on Pinata to manage IPFS DevOps for them. Running IPFS nodes and infrastructure can be very expensive and time consuming. Uh, especially if you're throwing an entire team at it. And if you want to use Pinata in addition to hosting content uh, on your own nodes, we can also help you increase uptime and availability of your content. So who uses Pinata? Uh, blockchain applications are a big one. We came from the blockchain space. It's where we launched. And these applications are all using us for off-chain data. This is because the content addressable nature of IPFS allows blockchain applications to store a lot larger amounts of data uh, off chain while still maintaining full immutability of the data. And this is super important for blockchain applications in general. So for similar reasons, we also have a lot of digital artist creators who use Pinata and IPFS for these things called non-fungible tokens or NFTs for short. If you guys have ever heard of like OpenSea, Super Rare, uh, even CryptoKitties is probably the one a lot of people are familiar with. These are all NFTs. And these are little uh, basically assets that are printed on chain and then they reference data. Uh, previously, these NFTs have referenced traditional web URLs and for those of you that understand IPFS and why it's better than the traditional web, it might make sense why they wanna to switch to IPFS. Uh, using IPFS allows them to basically make sure their content is immutable and will never change and can be served from anywhere in the world, regardless of whether uh, you know, it's linking to say some uh, Amazon S3 bucket somewhere, right? That's, that's not very uh, long-term. So for an awesome write-up on this subject as well, there's a lot of information there. Check out, we have a recent blog post on NFTs written by a community artist uh, called Coney Digital. So it was a great post, really a good guy. And then lastly, uh, something that's really cool with IPFS, I'm sure you guys will be hearing a lot about this. Uh, we've heard Fleek mentioned, uh, is a really big player in this space. Blockchain-based domains are becoming big. And these are things, uh, domains offered by say, Unstoppable Domains or ENS, and what these, allow users to do is host their own websites, which then resolve uh, by pointing to a blockchain record uh, of an IPFS hash. So many people hosting their websites will rely on Pinata to basically host their content for that website and serve it to the rest of the world so they don't have to run their own servers for just you know one single website. Okay, so a lot of these use cases have a similar problem they're solving. And this is something we kind of heavily focus on at Pinata, which is in the modern web, you have to trust every server you interact with. You have to hope that nobody's changed a file's location without telling you. You also have to hope that no server has been compromised and is secretly feeding you faulty data. With IPFS and its content addressable file system, that you don't really have to worry about that. So our users can safely store data with us on IPFS, knowing that we'll never be able to change it without them knowing. So as long as the content being served matched up with the CID that they're asking for, uh, users know that the data they're receiving is correct and hasn't changed. 
So we like to say that this is trusting the data itself without needing to trust where it's coming from. So it could be coming from their servers, it could be coming from Pinata, it could be coming from a different pinning service or basically any node in the network that has that data, they don't need to care where it comes from. As long as it matches the CID, that's the most important thing here. Okay, so we talked a, a little bit about Pinata, but let's get to 050, which is the reason we're all here today. So as you guys have already heard, uh, the DHT received massive improvements with 050. These new improvements mean that nodes are basically able to let other nodes know about their content a lot quicker with a lot of uh, very improved efficiency. And similarly, it also lets nodes in the network locate content faster. So this means that services that are uh, handling large amounts of public data, such as Pinata, are able to get our users' content to where it's being requested a lot faster, which leads to a better user experience and leads to more people using IPFS, which is great. Um, secondly, bit swap improvements. I heard a little bit about these as well. So O50 brought serious improvements to bit swap, and these improvements were the direct result of an awesome collaboration between uh, the IPFS team and Netflix. Uh, shout out to Edgar Lee if you're on this call or going to watch it at some point. Really awesome work. Um, and what these improvements mean for Pinata, to put it simply, uh, these improvements mean that once our content is found, so the DHT helps the content get found quicker, and then once the content's found, uh, BitSwap helps it get to the requesting node a lot more efficiently. With, previously, uh, with previous versions of BitSwap, there were often a ton of duplicate blocks that were getting sent between the nodes, and this wasted bandwidth and slowed down the content delivery. And then with new BitSwap, uh, content's being delivered faster, and less duplicate blocks are being sent in the process. So this means large content providers like Pinata are able to get you your content faster, while also lowering the amount of bandwidth needed by both us and our users, which is super awesome. Um, so lastly, I just kind of wanted to talk about how you guys can all get involved here. Um, there's a lot of opportunities to get involved with IPFS. Some of us are running our own projects. Uh, a lot of us are thinking about getting involved. The first thing I want to talk about is the early testers program. So as part of each major IPFS release, um, Pinata is one of multiple teams that deploys the new version to our test network and makes sure that everything's working properly, makes sure that the release is stable before it gets released to the world. And the more eyes that we can get on each new version of IPFS before a release uh, means that each release is going to be more stable. So if you like to test new things, try and break them, uh, highly recommend checking out the early testers program. Your help is appreciated. Uh, next, so I talked about a little bit of collab work uh, specifically between Netflix and BitSwap. The IPFS ecosystem prides itself on its open source nature. Many of the improvements being made to IPFS are a direct result of contributions from the community. So if you find yourself modifying some piece of the IPFS tech stack, to solve a problem that's specific to you or your project, um, consider contributing what you've worked on to the official IPFS code base. And then the rising tide will lift all boats and everybody wins. And then lastly, uh, dev grants and bounties. So if you aren't sure where to start, I'd recommend checking out dev grants or bounties. Uh, you'll find a lot of opportunities to help out the IPFS project, whether it's documentation or uh, creating new code, and then you can get paid for the help you provide. So again, everybody wins. Uh, that's all I really have. Uh, so I'd like to say happy pain. Um, thanks to the IPFS team for putting together some awesome work on 050 and for everybody else for presenting today.